Hello, my full legal given name is Michael David Harrison. I was born on May 11th, 1978. I am a Taurus. My mother was named Cheryl Ann Harrison. She was born on August 27th, 1956. She was a Virgo. My father was named David Wayne Harrison. He was born on July 27th, 1955. He was a Leo. On April 5th, 2021, exactly two years from today, an instant after midnight, I was reborn, born again as Aries. My messianic name is Mikael Ben David, aka Michael, son of David. On February 28th, 2021, which would have been the 45th anniversary of my parents, I started to become infused with the Holy Spirit, the power of prophecy, and thus began the most insane 36 days of my life. On day five, I found God and became a prophet. On day 35, I did something very specific and empowered by God, I created what is commonly known as the Axis Mundi the first to exist on this planet since 70 AD. Okay, if I'm the prophet of God that I claim to be, what is the true nature of a God? Well, as prophesized, there is one, and then there is also another. Okay, the number one, aka the Aleph, is the intangible creator God. She is God in Christianity. She is Allah in Islam. She is Hashem in Judaism. She is Brahma in Hinduism. Her personal name is is Gaia. It is also the Tetragrammaton. The Tetragrammaton is means four symbols. The symbols change over time, but there's always four of them and they always have a structure. It's like a mathematical riddle. The first and third symbols are always different. The second and fourth are always the same. The number two, aka the bet, is the firstborn, first creation of the Creator God. She's most commonly known as the Angel of the Lord. Her personal name is Azrael, not Azrael, Azrael. She also has many other names, including but not excluding the Angel of Death, the Angel of Justice, Metatron, the Prince of Presence, the Scribe of God, the Right Arm of God, the Right Hand of God, the Queen of the Seraphim, the King of the Seraphim, amongst many others. I am the Three, a.k.a. the Gimel, a.k.a. the Prophet. So what do God and the Angel of the Lord want from you all? Well, that can be summarized in two rules, two commandments, two commands from God. Okay, the first rule, the unwritten rule, and directly quoting God here, the rule if humanity ever forgets again, humanity is pretty much going to figure itself out. That rule is, do not touch another human being without their consent. You might be laughing right now, but I assure you she's not kidding. To quote her in another way, if you humans think I'm going to let you turn into a bunch of space pirates run by a handful of trillionaires, you are out of your fucking minds. She does not use F-bombs very much. I only know of three times she does. This is one of them. The second rule is written down and states as follows. It's all about honesty, hyphen, lies are ticked down. I would like to note that that's not actually a proper sentence, nor is that actually proper English. Okay, if I'm a prophet... I must have prophecies. I do. I have three. Okay, my first prophecy can be summed up by paraphrasing my dead father and what he told me in my moment before my rock bottom moment. People of Earth, you are collectively sinking into the abyss and you know it. Adapt and survive or perish. In other words, if humanity keeps on its current path, I prophesize within the next three to five decades, approximately half the world's population will die, about 4 billion people. Which means if you are living today, you have about a 50-50 chance of being a corpse or a grave digger in the next three to five decades. Okay, prophecy number two. Regardless if humanity changes its current path, humanity's luck of barely dodging large asteroids is going to end. By the year 2122, humanity will have to destroy or deflect a large asteroid, which otherwise will lead to the death of millions or billions of people. My third prophecy, the good one. If humanity does heed my warning and humanity does change its path and humanity does become the good, God-fearing, God-loving men and women God wants you to be, God will bless you all with one of the most spectacular sights that any mortal can see. God will make Beetlejuice go supernova. Okay, firstly, I'm not magic. 
but I do have supernatural abilities, defined as abilities that no other human being on the planet has, maybe no abilities that any human being has ever had. I should not be able to chase down some of the greatest mathematicians of all time with arts and crafts supplies and a MacBook Pro, but that's what I've been doing for the last two years. The image that you just saw is just the times tables with some numbers colored in. The purple numbers are obviously prime squared. The blue and green numbers are modified prime squares, what I call X numbers. And you get these numbers by taking any prime, squaring it, subtracting one, and dividing by six. The blue numbers are all X numbers that correspond to prime numbers on what is commonly known as the five mod six line. The green numbers are all modified primes on what is commonly known as the one mod six line. If you look closely enough, and think hard enough, you will see that the inherent structure of the X numbers proves the twin prime conjecture, but it does more than that. It also shows why all twin primes have to start with a five mod six number and end with a one mod six number, never the opposite. And most importantly, it shows not only are there an infinite amount of twin primes, there are an infinite amount of twin primes that are separated by only one odd number, and that one odd number will always end in five. And finally, I have three mathematical constructs to show you all, two equations and one set of tiles for you all to analyze and to demonstrate my mathematical prowess that God has bestowed upon me. This is tile A. This is tile B. This is a very good algebraic expression for the perimeter of an ellipse, except that it uses the golden ratio, not pi. And here's my cherry on the Sunday. It's a very good approximation for pi. This is better than within one part in 900 billion. Please notice on my last equation that it contains pi, Euler's number, the golden ratio, the imaginary unit, an arc sine function, a square root, and whole numbers. It also contains all the orders of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. And please note the triple stack exponent and the double stack Euler's number. All right, Jewish people, I know what I called myself earlier, but I got to make my claims around the rest of the world. I'll be back, I promise. Okay, Christianity first. I am the second Christian prophet, and I am supposed to be the embodiment of Jesus Christ, but I'm not his direct reincarnation. I'm the embodiment of many, but the reincarnation of only one specific individual, and it isn't Jesus. Islam. I am the Mahdi. I know exactly how you guys are going to come. You're going to say I can't be the Mahdi because my name isn't Muhammad al-Abdullah. But that name was desecrated in 1978 when a self-proclaimed Mahdi named Muhammad al-Abdullah got his brains blown all over the cob. Hinduism. This is the craziest claim on paper. I am the Kalki. I would not have claimed that until recently, but as soon as I became Mashiach, I knew I was Kalki for two different reasons. The Kalki has a duality and a trinity. Duality. Unlike the nine other avatars of Vishnu, Kalki is always on that white horse. He's always that blue divine being on that white horse almost as if they are the same thing. Trinity. Unlike the nine other avatars of Vishnu, Kalki being the tenth and final, not only has to be an avatar of Vishnu, but also, in a very real way, has to be an avatar of the creator Brahma and the destroyer Shiva. Buddhism. I'm the second coming of Buddha, the only other being who has obtained a state of what is commonly called nirvana with a remainder, a.k.a. obtained her nirvana, didn't die. China. I'm the second coming of the Yellow Emperor, and I thought I would name the Red Emperor, but when it became a Shiach and I learned that Aleph meant ox in 2021 and the Chinese Zodiac was a metal ox year, I knew that I would be known as the Metal Emperor, which definitely makes me the Emperor of China. Japan. As Gaia and Azrael are Izignagi and Izignami, the Japanese creator gods, I am the second coming of Amaterasu, the embodiment of the sun, your flag, except I'm a man and my name is Michael. In my next life, I will be Tsukiyomi, the embodiment of the moon, except I'll be a woman, and my name will be Elizabeth. And in both lives, I have more than a little bit of Susa no in me, which definitely makes me Emperor of Japan. Native Americans, I am the Pahana, and you guys have different requirements than the Abrahamic religions or the Eastern cultures. Firstly, the Pahana has to be white. I got that covered in spades. Secondly, the Pahana has to have a rock. I do. Thirdly, that rock has to look like it's bleeding. It does. It's in some way metamorphic. But most importantly, that rock has to have a story that links the Pahana to the sky gods and the earth gods, for that is the rift that he is ultimately here to repair. 
South America and Africa. I don't have any specific prophecy for you guys. I think it's because you don't have that many beasts of burden. But you are encompassed, as the entire world is, under the oldest fable myth that I've ever heard that rang true. And that is the story of the Tree of Life and the Earth Diver, or the Tree of Life and the Man from the Underworld, which has to do with the relationship between God and her empowered mortals, her prophets. It also has to do with the esoteric concept called terra firma. Australia, and by that I mean Aboriginal Australia, the oldest continuous culture in the world. Until the recent past, you guys got cut off from the rest of the world for over 50,000 years, two ice ages ago. And yet some of your myths and legends are so close to other parts of the world that they have to have a common ancestor. And one of your oldest and most famous legend is about a giant with bad intentions chasing seven sisters. And in the Greek myth of that legend, which is exactly the same, that giant is named Orion, the constellation Orion. And those seven sisters that he's chasing are the Pleiades, the Pleiades cluster, except only six of them are visible these days, almost like one disappeared in the last 50,000 years. What constellation is ever between Orion and the Pleiades, eternally fighting Orion? That would be the constellation of Taurus. And even more so, if you draw a straight line between the right arm of Orion, Betelgeuse, and the Pleiades, it almost directly goes through the fiery red eye of the constellation Taurus. And that fiery red eye is a star called Aldebaran. Its ancient name was Aeldebaran, A-E Aldebaran. Which brings me back to Judaism. See, told you. For out of all the stars in the sky, the star Aeldebaran is the solar representation of the Archangel Michael, the prince and protector of the Jewish people. He serves similar roles in Christianity and Islam. Judaism. I am Mashiach, and I have revealed the presence and the will of Hashem on the exact date and time that she commanded me to. April 5th, 2023, the first day of Passover.